Hi everyone, I'm Leslie with HireMyMom.com and I'm excited to have a longtime friend and Hire My Mom user with me today. It's Sarah Langenfelter. She got her start on Hire My Mom back in 2011, so nine years ago, and her career has just taken off. She's going to share a lot about her journey as a virtual assistant and getting started and what she's doing now. So Sarah, tell us more about yourself and how you got started. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. When you said nine years, I'm like, wow, this is like, it's, I, I just didn't even really do the math and think about that. It's been that long. Um, but yeah, man, the way I got my start was, I think so like many of us, we're sometimes unhappy with what we're doing. We're kind of looking for options. Um, I, I had an employee job, but I just wasn't happy. And on Facebook one day I saw somebody that used the term virtual assistant. And I just kind of like, I didn't really know what it was, but I thought, well, it must be an assistant that works virtually. Um, did some Googling, found out about it. And it wasn't very long after that, that's when I found HireMyMom.com and, and learned about that site. Um, because back then, I think the industry was much smaller than it is now. And there was, it was difficult to find information. And um, I just, I love to learn anyways. I'm a very curious person. So continue to Google and find information. Um, you know, sign up on Hire My Mom, and in two months, I think it was, I had two clients. In fact, I got them about the same time. Uh, that wasn't my goal. I was just trying to get one. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's how it started, was just me learning about it, kind of being curious, thinking, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the chance on this. And then I was really just thinking at the time that it was going to be some extra income. Uh, the job I was at, I hadn't had a raise in five years, and was married and had three kids at the time. And I'm like, you know, would love to bring in some extra income. Mm -hmm. And that was the original plan. Um, but I still didn't realize, and it's really because I didn't understand the potential and I didn't understand just the, the opportunity that there was this huge online world that I, you know, didn't know about. And after in six to 12 months, I pretty much couldn't take any on any more clients. I was still doing the job, I was doing the VA work, and it took a year and a half before I made the decision to quit my job. I was at the point where rates had increased, I, you know, I loved my clients, but I was starting to work a lot, and I felt like I wasn't able to spend much time with my family, and I'm like, wait a minute, I just started this to make extra money, and then now it's kind of taken over, and I was like, I either need to cut back on the VA work, or I need to just like jump and do this full time. And I wanted to do it full time because I'm like, well, no more boss to tell me what to do. I can set my rates. I can set my schedule. And then, you know, here we are nine years later. Yeah. And the most beautiful part to me has always been that freedom and flexibility in every regard, not just your yes. schedule, but your rates, right. how much you want to work, how little you want to work, when you want to get That's to true. When you want to go see your kid, school program, those sorts of things are invaluable as a mom. I, I know. Think. Yeah, and I think a lot of times as a mom, when you're trying to work a job, even if you have vacation or personal time you can take, you know, I a lot of times felt guilty if I had to ask my boss, like, well, I need, you know, can I take off to do this or can I? And it was, I always felt like I was having to not do very well in some areas. So it's like either as a mom or, and doing the virtual assistant thing, I, I didn't feel that way. I was no longer feeling guilty for make a decision and able to, to do what worked for me, you know, go to those school parties, do all those things. And at the end of the day, feel like, Hey, I'm doing both. I'm doing great. And, uh, yeah, couldn't be any better than that. Yes. And so you began your full-time uh, VA business and then you started actually creating a course because you knew there was some people that yes. wanted to do what you're doing. So now you help other ladies, moms, or anyone that wants to yeah. start a VA business. Yes. So when I was learning, I found like some webinars and other little trainings, a lot of what I came across was very specific. So like, I remember back then, if you want to do marketing or go into like social media, and when I was first getting started, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And so I'm like, well, I don't know that I want to spend money on a training with something that I may not really enjoy. And then I also, so I ended up not really finding a training that would support me. And then I made a lot of mistakes. 
Um, I, I'm very transparent about how I started. And when I first got started, I was charging $10 an hour. My rates were way too low. Um, part of my reason for doing that was where I lived at the time, a lot of jobs would start about $10, $12 an hour, even with college degrees. Mm. Um, very rural area. But I, you know, I wasn't charging enough. I didn't really, I said yes to everyone. Um, I would realize as I was building my business and making some of these mistakes, like I would correct that. But, you know, it's really, it's really tough. It's really tough when you're doing things and trying to learn and trying to build a business and then you're not really happy with how it's going and you're maybe not always feeling um, valued and appreciated. And so a lot of those things that happened over time, I took that and put that into my course and really, um, really thought about, you know, what is it that was missing when I was getting started that would have given me that structure and that foundation right. and, um, you know, to make sure moms can build that business that works for their family and their lifestyle, whatever that might look like. Right. And so in a nutshell, what does your course cover? I know you have different modules, so yes. I'm so I, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I kind of break it into three main, if I was to put it into three main areas, I'm talking with my hands, but I don't know if you can see that. Um, the first one is getting the business structure in place. So it starts with naming your business, getting your, your phone number, your email, kind of all those like those professional things. But then also thinking about how many hours can I work? How am I going to structure my day, my week? Um, how am I... Um, how am I going to package my services? What am I going to charge? What am I going to offer? So we cover all those kind of foundational core type business things. And then the second part goes really into the software. And I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about the software because I've worked with well over a hundred clients by now. I mean, I've, I've lost count and 90% of them use all similar programs. So for example, like, you know, Google docs, um, Google drive, um, a lot of free programs. So some of the more specialized ones that VAs sometimes think they need to know, they don't need to know getting started. So we really spend time going over that core software and I give them ways to actually start to use it so that when they do start working with clients, like they have some experience, they're not starting from zero. And then the last part of it covers some launch management and project management. Um, I know there are people that they specialize just in those areas, but I go over the basics because what I had found was working with clients, pretty much all my clients are launching something throughout the, you know, the course of their business. And it's a huge asset to them to have a VA that gets those basics and understands how, you know, how they can help. And then we also cover towards the end, building a website and how they can grow their own business. And the reason I do the website at the end is because you don't need one when you're getting started. So Mm. And that's a question that a lot of times people ask, like, do I have to have a website? And I agree. In the early days, you do not. But as you want to grow your business, it's a great way for people to learn more about you before they yeah. hire you. So, yeah. Yeah. I try to be really clear about what you should invest money in up front and what you can wait on. So, cause you know, as, as moms and it's, we usually have limited funds to spend and we've got to be smart with that. And so I want them to spend their money on what's going to produce the results at that time. And then later they can move on to, you know, what's next, the next step. And it's so valuable to learn from someone who's gone down that path for nine years and can tell you what mistakes not to make because there's no right. way to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch when you can learn from someone who's already met and challenged and gotten through a lot of that. So. Exactly. So I know within uh, the Hire My Mom community, we get asked a lot of questions and I thought, let's just hit some of these that yes. you get asked and we get asked. Um, yeah. So um, if they're a stay-at-home mom or they haven't worked in a while, what do they do? Yeah. So I run into this a lot and there are many successful virtual assistants that have been in that position. And, you know, the most important thing that I tell anybody wanting to start out is, first of all, think about your goal. Like if you've been a stay at home mom and if your kids are still home with you, if you have young children, um, it, you're going to have less time to work. So kind of think about, you know, am I just needing to make the car payment? Am I needing to make the house payment? Just start small so that you don't put this unneeded pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you kind of figure out, okay, like this is what I need to do, then start thinking about 
any past skills. And it does not necessarily have to be from a job. I mean, as a mom, we all know, like most of us are making lists and planning schedules and problem solving, you know, whatever it has to do with. And so I always like to tell people, think about the things you do on a daily basis. In fact, make a list. If sometimes we go about doing these things and it doesn't really cross our mind that um, the skills could translate into something, but make that list of what you do and then think about how that could apply to helping clients. Mm -hmm. um, because so many clients need people that can problem solve, that can figure things out, that are organized. So it's, it's generally, you already have several of the skills, you just don't realize that you do. Yes, and we actually have a blog on that topic because it talks about all the different um, skills that a mom has just as a mom yeah. and how yeah. all those translate. I mean, like uh, dispute resolution, hello, if you have kids <laughs> and siblings, you're an expert or you, you have a lot of experience. So funny ones like that, but there, yeah. are, there are truly a lot of skills that you have that you don't realize translate into um, being a good virtual assistant or a remote employee, um, you know, exactly that sort of thing. So that's great. Um, yeah. what about the ladies that are working a nine to five? We get that question a lot too. They want to transition like you did and you've kind of yep. given the answer to that, but do you have any other advice for those moms that want to be able to stay at home and they don't, they're yeah. to take the leap? Yeah. So one of the, one of the things I advise against sometimes is when somebody is wanting to leave that nine to five, if they say, well, I can't leave unless I replace my salary or my current income. So what I like to actually look at is what do you need to leave that job? Like if you need that, that amount, then okay. But be realistic. I sat down and I did a budget. I, I got all the bills, all the expenses. And I'm like, okay, what do I actually need to bring in with client work to make, make this work to, for it to make sense? Um, cause then you can totally build on that. You can always set bigger goals, but be realistic about what it really takes. And then once you know that, um, again, it's about those skills in jobs, you, there are always things. And so it's about making that list. You know, what have you done? If you've done administrative secretarial, I mean, I did bookkeeping for years. Well, right there, I was looking at details and I was dealing with numbers and math. So many things that you could pull into online, online work, you know, people need bookkeepers, people need, so your skills are always going to translate. It's just more about changing up that thinking about, okay, even though it's not going to be um, exactly the same, how can it still apply? And then when you do those interviews, what I did early on is I gave those potential clients examples. So the example I actually used was when they said, well, but you're new and you've not done this VA work and you had a job, like how, how can you help me? I told him, I said, well, let me tell you 10 years ago when I started my bookkeeping job, I'd never done bookkeeping. It's like, I was good with math. I'd done some accounts receivable. And I was like, in six months, I was doing the job fully on my own. I figured it out. I researched, I looked up information. I asked questions and I told him, so I said, so as a virtual assistant, I will do the same thing to make sure I succeed. There was like no doubt in my mind that I could figure it out. So some of it's having that confidence to explain to them, you know, a situation like that. Yes, and when you have that drive and passion, I yeah. to do amazing things. Cause I like to tell people, you know, when I started on my journey 25 years ago, all I knew is I had just finished my master's degree, had zero desire to be a stay at home mom. I thought, I thought I was gonna be a <laughs> corporate woman. And yeah. as soon as I had my first baby, it was less than a year after that, uh, like it wrecked me. Like I was, I could not imagine going to back to work full time every day. Yeah, I, know. I did because I told my employer I was coming back and I really meant it. Oh wow. I yeah. Back for two weeks and I cried every single day. Oh man. And, um, I just told him, I said, I'm so sorry. This is not for me. Is there any opportunity for flex work? And this work with home right. was not a thing back then, but I, I still yeah. have. And then yeah. You know, back then the mentality was you'll probably just sit home and watch soap operas and you right. Won't. And so that didn't work out. So I talked to my husband. I was like, I don't know how we're going to make this work, but I, I know that I cannot continue in this job. Yeah. And yeah. so what we did was like you, I took a budget, yeah. everything that we had, to, you know, we got rid of cable TV, we right. sold one of our cars. So we only yeah. had a car and it was paid for. Yeah. Um, we ate ramen noodles. We were used to that because we put ourselves through college. Like yeah. rent by. 
And I did the bottom line number for me was right around 500 minimum just to live and have electricity, you know, not yeah. a, a roof. Yeah. And so that was my goal. I was like, I've got to go out. And this was, you know, pre internet ish. Right. So I actually had to like call, go knock on doors and all of that. But I was so yeah. determined that I was going to make it work. And wow. you know, I was able to slowly, like you, build that business yeah. so that, you know, when you have a fire in your belly and you know what you want, you'll do some amazing things to make it work. So I was determined like you, like I was going to learn, I was going to find the clients. And that's what led me to start Home-Based Working Moms, like in 96, I think it was, which was wow. virtual um, chamber of commerce for moms. And as yeah. from home became more accepted than Hire Mom right. 2007. So it's, you know, it's that drive and that passion. Yes. You really want to be in control of your day and your schedule and have that quality yeah. time with your family. So, yeah, I just like to encourage people that you can do it. I mean, you yes. may think, cause you also have to factor in the fact that if you're using daycare or if you're commuting or if you're right. buying business clothes, meals out, all those things you can do from your budget. So yes, we factored that in too, because back then I think it was like, I don't know, 400 a month for daycare or, you know, something oh, like that. So right. Automatically, we're going to save 400 a month if you yeah. want. I mean, I had to have a, a someone come in and help every now and then. So I was paying, right. pay, but it wasn't 400 a month. So, yes. Yeah. It's really thinking about what you really want and what you're willing to do to get there. Cause there's always changes you can make in your current lifestyle to reach that, you know, that goal. And, um, you know, yeah. Awesome and that you're able to do that. We were well worth it. I mean, I yeah. still don't want to eat ramen noodles. I'm tired of them, even from 24 <laughs> years ago, but it was worth it at the time, you know? <laughs> right. Well, I think knowing it's temporary and that's the thing. If somebody's thinking about doing this and they're hearing us talk about this and they're like, oh, I don't, it is, it is not long-term. It's temporary. It's while you're getting it going. And then as you get more income coming in, you know, then you can start making some of those changes, adding some of those, you know, stop eating ramen. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, okay. So what are some of the specific trainings that people need? Like you were talking about um, knowing certain programs and that sort of thing. I'm guessing that's covered in your um, course. Yes. So we cover, we cover all those basics. Um, you know, some of them like MailChimp, cause that's very popular for businesses that are getting started. Some online calendars, uh, Zoom, um, a few other, trying to think off the top of my head. It's really, in fact, I did a interview with a, a client once and I actually asked them because they had had a lot of different VAs. And I said, what is most important to you in hiring a virtual assistant? Like what, what do you really look for? And they said, you know, it's not really the software skills that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. They said, I'm wanting someone that takes initiative, that communicates well, that can, pays attention to details. So it's more working on some of those skills and, and thinking about how you're presenting yourself, how you're speaking, how you're communicating, because if you think about it, if you're working with someone and if, if you're not clear on things, if you're not asking questions, if you're not um, getting things done in time with the client, it doesn't matter what your skills are. It's not going to, it's not going to work out. Yes. Um, so we cover some of that in the training too, but yeah, we definitely cover the software so that when those VAs are getting started, they have that confidence and they've had some hands-on experience. So they, you know, I agree the, game. the VAs I've had, you know, those that take initiative, those that follow through, those that even suggest new ways to do something, yes. those are, are invaluable. It's not just because you know how to use right. Trello or Slack or something like that, because anybody right. learn that, but yeah, yeah. it's more of the core uh, value that you can bring. So that's, that's a good point. Yeah. So let's see, what else was I going to ask? Um, so what should VA start their rates at? Because I know a lot of people have no idea what <laughs> starting out, should they start low and build up or what, what's your recommendation there? Yeah. So I actually kind of have a couple different answers and it kind of depends on the person. So one, I always tell people you need to feel comfortable with your rate because let's say you come up with the number $30 an hour, but yet you are so nervous and you don't feel like you're really worth that. That's going to come across to the client. So you need to have a rate that feels good. Um, what I actually see common with most clients that are hiring a VA, if it's for um, more general administrative, not necessarily a specialized area, and if it's a new VA, usually they're looking between 15 and 25 an hour. 
it's usually what clients kind of think they're going to pay. Now, I have seen VAs start a little higher. Um, if they're starting higher, they're going to need to have more experience because that client is going to expect them to already know how to do things. So if you're looking at starting at, you know, $30 or up, um, then you really need to be spending some time on your own, really learning some software, practicing different things, putting together portfolio and examples, things that um, can be a little stressful to do by yourself early on. Yeah. And uh, what I tell the students that go through my training is that they should for sure be able to start at $25 an hour because we do cover so many different things and technology, but I also teach them to create packages so that they have recurring, you know, monthly revenue. So, and what I mean by that is saying, you know, 20 hours a month or 40 hours a month. And when they have a call with a potential client saying, well, this is how I work. My smallest package is, and I prefer to work, you know, on, you know, long-term. And that way, you know, that goes back to that budget. And then, you know, month to month, what income you have coming in, as long as you're working with that client. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I know that we get jobs on hiring my mom anywhere. I mean, sometimes they're $10 an hour yeah. on up to, you know, 25. And I think some of that is because small businesses have zero idea what yeah. the rate is. And I tell people, if it's below your rate, let's say you're, you're a $20 an hour and it's saying 10 mm -hmm. to 15, I think still apply and then express, you know, your interest and let them know why your fee is, you know, that amount and that sort of thing. Because a lot of times, like I said, these are a lot of times small businesses that maybe have never hired or they're right. hiring. They're not HR professionals. They don't have any kind of, right. they, they don't know what the going rate is. And of course, everybody is going to try to pay less. Right. So it's, it's knowing that even if you see a job posted and it's below your range, just right. as long as it's, if your range is, you know, a hundred dollars an hour, then obviously you probably are not a good fit. But if it's yeah. reason, I, I highly recommend people still apply and give some reasoning behind their skills and their, their, the value that they would bring. Definitely. And, you know, on that subject of lower rates, I know my first client, you know, was $10 an hour, but then he also did something pretty quickly where I got a percentage of um, a program I was helping him do. So it actually ended up really, and I didn't know on the job posting that, that was going to be a part of the deal. And that happened within, just a, a, you know, three months or a few months. Mm -hmm. So you never know, yeah, what that can really turn into. And then if you're in a situation where you really need some income, then, you know, I'm not saying lower your rates, but if it's like, if you can't make rent, if you're really in a situation where you quickly need to supplement, then, you know, you might think about, well, maybe I should work with this client until I can, you know, build things up and then I can, you know, take on some new ones, raise rates and you know go for that because it's you're not locked into it if you work with someone it's not like you can't change your mind at some point yeah and that's one of the beautiful things about this is because if you have five clients and one of them you really don't enjoy working with yeah. then you have permission to fire your client and try to fill that with someone else so again and you know we're all different personalities and we all yeah. have our own little um strengths and weaknesses and sometimes it's just not a good fit and so you don't have to right. feel bad about that yeah um, you just have to realize as you go what type of person you like working for and what type you don't and so it's kind of like you've got to decide if you want them to hire you or if you want to be hired by them as well as you go yeah i've had clients ask me that we'll we'll do like a call and they're like well in fact just there you go do you want to work with me <laughs> i think they were yeah. they had so much going on i think they're afraid like I wouldn't want to work with them. So yeah, it goes both ways. And I help the VAs in my training to identify that early on to think about the types of people they want to work with. Yes. Um, so that when they are getting those clients, hopefully it's a relationship where they, they do like it and they want to keep working with them. But yeah, we all have clients. We have to fire at times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The other question, the only other question I have was, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about niching with their yes. business and VAs, the, the whole term is so broad because there's so many different varieties of VAs. So yeah. what's your thought um, on that? Yeah, my, I don't suggest or teach that anybody niche down right away. I think you are, for one, when you're first starting out, you usually don't know what you're really gonna wanna do. Um, I didn't. Now I did know there were tasks and things I, I didn't wanna do, I didn't wanna offer. And so I just kind of offered you know, everything else. Um, so unless you have maybe specific experience in an industry, like the other day I was talking to someone who has a degree in interior design 
And I happen to know a client that, or have a client that's an interior designer and says, you know what, the interior design industry needs VAs just for them so bad because they use a specific software and things that other industries don't. And so like for this person, they could probably niche down pretty quickly to the interior design industry and have several clients. Right. Um, but in general, when you're getting started, I tell everybody, you know what, you know, do the things you think you're going to like. And then as you figure out what you're good at, then get more specific, change it as you go. And that's the beauty of this is that you can, you can change your services. You can, you know, get more specific. You can decide to change up how you package things. And, um, I just don't like for anybody to get so specific in the beginning with sometimes it really eliminates clients and then you have trouble kind of getting started and then it can, you know, your confidence can kind of get you down. And I don't want to see that. I want to see people get some clients and have success, feel good, realize how it works and be like, Oh, I can do this. Maybe I'll go get another client and go from there. I've seen it happen organically where, you know, someone yeah. will get a client that's a real estate agent and they yes. really start to understand that industry and then they right. recommend them to two or three. And before you know it, they are a real estate virtual assistant or yes. a summit virtual assistant. And so sometimes it just happens organically. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, the person is like, I'm really passionate about um, natural medicine. I want to, you know, mm -hmm. work with whatever, whatever. And so, yeah, it can happen either or. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, any final thoughts or recommendations, tips before we? Yeah, I think the final thing I would say, because we didn't really touch on this is, and one of the questions I get pretty often is how can moms work from home with their kids home? Like, what is, what does that look like? And I, you know, I know depending on the time of the year and what's happening, that can, that can work differently. But I will tell you, if you are just getting started and you have young children, like infants, toddlers, I would highly suggest you setting specific work days or work hours and having someone at least a few hours to watch the kids. Mm -hmm. um, because what I have seen happen is sometimes, you know, there's meetings and different things going on. And it's really hard for a client that's looking to hire someone if kids are screaming, if a baby's crying, and that's going to happen. Kids are kids. Right. So kind of think ahead with that. Um, you know, if they're older children, then you can still kind of have a structure in place and have them, you know, playing online or doing something that, you know, is going to keep them occupied. But I will say if you have very young children and you're trying to do this on your own, nobody watching the kids, it, it is going to be a challenge. It is. I agree. Yeah. And for me, you know, I started out when I had a two month old. And so I was able to, in the very beginning, just work during naps or when she was asleep. Right. And that works when you're just starting out and you only have, you know, yeah. two hours of work a day. But as, exactly. day, as your business grows, you're, yes. if you're wanting to go more than two hours a day. You're going yeah. to, that's what I ended up doing. I had, fortunately, yeah. my sister-in-law lived close enough by that she became my nanny. And yeah. she would come in certain days, certain times. And that's the only way I could see yeah. giving your best to your business without sacrificing the uh, nurturing of your children. And I don't know right. if, if other states have Mother's Day Out programs, but our church mm -hmm. does. Yeah. And it basically, um, like a, a place for our kid as they got older, I think mine started at yeah. two years old, they would go from like nine to one yeah. and they would do finger paints and Play-Doh and Bible stories and qua mm -hmm. what do you call it? Singing and it, they loved it. Like they would get the backpacks on. They couldn't yeah. wait to go and play with their friends. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to have dedicated work time. And then when they came home, right. I could be mom again. So that, exactly. that's what works for me. Yeah. And I just want moms to know that that, you know, that's so important and building a business and working from home, it's going to look different for everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's no like right or wrong answer on what that structure is going to look like, what that business is going to look like. And I love helping VAs to figure that out and figure out how to make that work for them. And then, so yeah, they can, you know, have everything they want. Yes. And so I told Sarah, we could probably talk for two hours, yeah. but in the interest of people's time, I was going to try to keep it to 30 minute ish. And so we're about there, Sarah. So I'm going to link um, under this in the comments to uh, your training and some more okay. resources and things like that so if people have questions they can reach yes definitely well thank you so much yeah thank you it was fun yes <laughs>